I'm here to turn this kale into vodka. Oh, and I'm, I'm kind of in a rush. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and we are making Kale Wash Vodka, which is something I've wanted to try for a long time. Thank you to the Patreons who keep hounding me about it. Here we are. We're doing it. <laughs> the general process for making a spirit is find a sugar sauce, add yeast, ferment, make alcohol, and then distill it to increase the proof or the ABV of that liquid. How does this stuff, how does kale fit into that process? It doesn't look like yeast. I mean, sure, there's like wild yeast hanging out on here, but that's not really what we're after. Uh, sure, we could probably go through some crazy like enzymatic pathway to turn, I don't know, like whatever's in this into some form of fermentable sugar, but that is not what we're here to talk about today. Uh, instead, we're gonna be using this stuff to keep our little yeasty friends really freaking happy. Or at least that's the plan. <laughs> so the first thing I wanna do is deal to the kale. And I have, how much have I got here? 550 grams. This is right around the right amount of kale because uh, I'm making a 90 liter wash uh, and accounts vary depending on exactly you know, who you're, who you're listening to and what recipe you're following. But the idea is that you're going to want roughly 100 grams of kale per 20 to 25 liters of wash. Now, me being me, I tend to be a little bit uh, anti going towards the higher end of the original gravity. You know, I, if it's whiskey or something like that, I'll keep it down below 9%, sort of 8.5 to 9% is my range. Vodka, uh, push it to 10, maybe 11%, but I, I tend to not go past that. Um, in my mind, I'd rather just work with a slightly larger volume, make it a little bit easier for the, for the yeast. The thing that decides how much alcohol you're going to have at the end is the amount of sugar you put in, not the amount of water you put in. Anyway, sorry to get off topic. What I'm trying to say is I'm doing a 90 liter wash. We need about five grams uh, per liter of kale. So that is going to be 400 and... 50, 450? Yeah, 450 grams of kale all up. Now I am taking off just some of the, like the more solid um, chunky stalks at the end, simply because uh, it's gonna be a little bit easier to process that in the future and um, less of the stringy sort of uh, fibrous stuff floating around is gonna be easier uh, in terms of distilling later on, not scorching and so on and so forth. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, that's my guess. If you don't wanna do it, who am I to stop you? <laughs> Next up. We need a pot with roughly 16 liters of water in it. Once the pot's up to a boil, you can drop it down to a simmer and add in your spinach. As soon as this comes back to a simmer, set your timer for five minutes, and then we're gonna kill the heat to it. When your timer goes off, you can kill the heat uh, and grab one of these little doodads. I find is the easiest way to do it, but obviously if you've got like a blender or a, like a smoothie making blender or you know what you've got, you know what'll do this kind of thing. Basically, we're trying to get uh, everything broken down into relatively small bits and you're looking for the liquid itself to go fairly green. There we go. Uh, hmm. I just realized you're not gonna be able to see that. Hold on, here we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, once it's looking like this, you know you're done. So, what was the purpose of processing all this kale up? Because I can tell you right now, it's not because I want vodka that tastes like kale. It's not what we're after. It turns out that yeast can't thrive on sugar alone. It needs nutrients. Now, this is something that can get pretty freaking geeky, and I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't done a whole lot of research into it because it's just always been one of those <laughs> you follow the steps and it works things. I know. It's a bit weak on my point of view, I should probably put some effort into that. But nitrogen, amino acids, magnesium, uh, phosphates, calcium, zinc, there's a whole host of stuff that yeast needs as a building block to do its yeasty thing. And the promise or the, the idea here is that kale being a superfood <laughs> can be a superfood for the yeast as well. Now I should mention too guys, this is not my recipe. This came from uh, originally, the first place I saw it was kicking around on the Home Distiller forums. 
awesome place for a whole bunch of awesome information and awesome recipes, so check that out too if you want to. And I'm really hoping it does work because I only have six days to get this video from woe to go. That's distilled, fermented, video edited, uploaded, all of it. And that is why this video is sponsored by Angel Thermal Resistant Yeast, or as most home distillers have ended up calling it, Angel Read Label. In any case, uh, I need to get back to it. Let's talk sugar. For this, we're gonna need 15 liters of pretty near to boiling water and uh, 15 kilos of sugar. I, honestly, this is gonna be easier to just throw it into the fermenter and do it all in there, but because that big blue thing's kind of hard to get video in and like actually see what's happening in there. Uh, I'm gonna do it in the, uh, the T500 pot uh, because that's where I decided to cook the water. So, uh, 15 kilograms of sugar. Why? Because I'm aiming for 10% ABV and we're doing 90 liters of, uh, of the stuff. By the way, man, um, it's probably gonna work now, isn't it, that I've cut this? Who can actually get these damn things to work properly? And I can never work them out, so I just cut them. <laughs> See? <laughs> uh, sugar goes into hot water. And you stir like mad until it dissolves. So just give it a good stirring until the water turns clear and there's nothing sitting on the bottom. You're good to go. Once the dissolved sugar is into the fermenter. The uh, spinach mix can go in as well. The goal now is to get this up to volume, which is 90 liters, freedom units, uh, and 35 degrees Celsius. So depending on where you are and what your ambient temperature is and groundwater temperature is and so on and so forth, I mean, just use a mix of hot and cold water. <laughs> so you hit the right volume at the right temperature. A quick stir just to make sure that it's not, um, you know, stratifying. There's not just cold water sitting on top. And obviously a quick read from of it is wonderful for this. 38 degrees Celsius. And while we're here, we might as well check. Uh, 1068. Yeah, so we can definitely top this up with a little bit more cold water. This video is, like I said earlier, sponsored by Angel Yeast, specifically their red label yeast or the uh, thermal tolerant yeast. And there is a reason that I specifically sought this out for this video. And that is because you can ferment the stuff up to 42 degrees Celsius. Sorry guys, uh, where's the dark spot? Uh, that in, in, in Fahrenheit. Uh, so the idea is that this stuff will take a whole lot of heat and ferment out really quite quickly. And it, apparently it does a really good job of it. Uh, I've been talking to Teddy Sad of Teddy Sad's Fast Fermenting Vodka, uh, and he said he is almost exclusively using this stuff for the uh, FFV now. That is super high praise for me, because FFV is one of my favorite recipes. I need to get around to making that again sometime. But it just seems like Red Label is a perfect fit for this video. Oh, and, and by the way, it also has a really high alcohol tolerance as well. In goes 25 grams of Angel Red Label, and today I'm gonna to be fermenting this at 38 degrees Celsius, which should be a walk in the park for this stuff. 24 hours later, it was, it was fermenting, but it wasn't exactly charging like I was hoping it would be. 72 hours after pitching, it had slowed right down, and it had only dropped down to 1.050. And it was at that point that I realized there was no way this video was gonna get done in six days. So it didn't guys, spoiler alert. <laughs> it's a week later. And that's why you had the Star Anise video last week, which was cool, I enjoyed it. I'm glad it worked out. But by day five, it had, it had just stalled out completely and it was sitting at 1.030 still. I was feeling pretty deflated about the whole thing. I was gonna be late on the video, this recipe that Seems to work for a bunch of other people, just wasn't working for me. Uh, perhaps, maybe it was the yeast. Is there a problem with the yeast? Uh, that doesn't make sense because I've heard all these awesome things from people I trust about the Red Label yeast, but maybe it had been treated poorly during shipping? So, I put together a little test all grain mash using the sous vide machine, uh, which worked surprisingly well, actually, guys. It was 100% uh, Pilsner malt, came out at 1.068 pitched some of that red label yeast into it, put it in uh, next to the other fermenter and it fermented at roughly 38 degrees Celsius. 
It absolutely took off <laughs> within 12 hours of pitching uh, and 36 hours after pitching it had fermented out to 1.005, which I was considering dry because all grain, no enzymes, so on and so forth. I'm all 100% on board with the, uh, the red label yeast. We got another problem. So, at this point, I am really beginning to think that maybe there's a problem with the kale wash, but I don't want to give up yet, and I want to know for sure. So I figured the best way to go about testing that would be to throw three tablespoons of Fermade K into the wash, give it a bit of a mix up, check the temperature, check the pH, make sure everything was okay, and see what happens. And lo and behold, 12 hours later, it was fermenting again. A day and a half after adding the nutrients in, and it had fermented out dry. I don't know. I can't say that this is, uh, you know, conclusive evidence. I don't know, guys. For me, this one didn't really work. But there is a bunch of people out there claiming that it works wonderfully and that it worked well for them, and I believe them. I, it, it's not anything like that. It's just that I think maybe it might be a little bit more finicky than some people are suspecting. Maybe it's different types of kale. I don't know, I'm down here in New Zealand. I don't know of anyone else that's done kale in New Zealand. Perhaps it's the exact way it's prepared. Perhaps, perhaps it's that I needed a whole lot more kale. Perhaps it's a case of certain groundwaters, you know, having more magnesium or zinc and not needing as much from the kale. I, I don't know. <laughs> For me, it didn't work so well. What I can say is that when I distilled this stuff, it was insanely clean. Even just doing the stripping runs, I probably could have taken, you know, a sample right out of the middle of that, proofed it down to 40% and called it vodka and no one would have <laughs> thought that different of it. It was really, really clean. I ran two stripping runs, collected all the low wines, added those along with around about six litres of leftover wash back into the still and distilled it for the spirit run using a dirty great big uh, Lego <laughs> monstrosity. <laughs> Three plates at the bottom, followed by a two-inch section that was filled with SPP. Uh, reflux was controlled by a D flag at the top, which, to be honest, when you're trying to control uh, reflux ratio, it was a little bit of a pain in the ass, not going to lie. I also had a few issues with uh, hoses kinking, so it was a bit of a finicky run, but shortly after collecting around about 100 mils of four shots, I got it dialed in just right, and it ran for the whole run perfectly. So I collected 450 mils of heads, and then I collected just under five liters of heart. This was reading 94.5% ABV on the alchemeter, uh, but that was at 18 degrees Celsius, so adjusted, it's pretty much 95% ABV. Obviously, guys, you don't need a weird setup like this to do it. I'm kind of a little bit annoyed at myself for not running this in the T500 just because the wash was so clean. So there we have it guys, that was proofed down to 40% ABV 12 hours ago to give it a bit of a, you know, give it a bit of a chance to mellow out and I gotta say team, it is very 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 clean. There's just a hint of bitterness on the back end, which makes me wonder if I got a little bit complacent at the end of that like seven hour run and let in just a smidge, just a smidge of that slightly bitter, uh, almost cementy like tails, just a hint of it. It could be too that I'm tasting this at nine o'clock in the morning and I just haven't uh, woken up yet. It's not like the all grain one that I did a little while ago that has a lot of grain flavor still carrying through. It's not like FFV that has that kind of grainy, almost licorice -y thing come through every time I've done it. It's going to be excellent as a base to use for gin or for macerating stuff in. I'm, I'm totally on board with that. The recipe in general has potential in my mind because of the flavor that's come out of this. It, even though I put the Fermade K in to, to try and rescue it, it's very, very clean. A little bit dubious about it providing enough nutrients really to get a good fermentation going but there's a bunch of other people out there that have had success with this uh, just thinking about it too I only did 10% ABV and I've seen people push that much higher like 16% kale washes so I don't know if you guys have had success with this and you think perhaps there's something that I missed out or a, a step that I forgot or I did slightly wrong let me know because I, I would really be keen to try this again 
I'm still really happy I did this, and I'm still really happy that this product turned out the way it did, because now uh, I can make some gin and stuff with it, which will be, which will be good. <laughs> Cheers! If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think, uh, and I'll catch you for the next one guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya!